Hi there, and welcome to another video of Made with Cables. My name is Mark, my handle on the forums is Andro, and today I'll be giving you a tutorial on how to make your own particle system inside of cables, like this one that you can see here on the window in front of me. This is a lot easier than it seems, so without further ado, let's get started. So first of all, I'm just going to get that off the screen, give myself a bit of space. Okay, so first of all, I'd like you to pause the video and just make what you see here. And please don't forget to put the scale up on 0 0.5. Now, just in case you missed it, uh, we just released a bite-sized video about the point material up and the point cloud from Array. It's three minutes. I check it out before you do this one. It might help you a lot with following this tutorial. So let's get started. Point cloud from Array expects an Array. So I'm going to grab the random Array 3x up. I'm going to pull that up here, and I'm going to put the number of values on 1,000. So it's generating values between minus 1 and 1. I'm going to click Point Material, and I'm going to put the scale by distance on. So if we go further away or closer, it changes the size of the points. Okay, so I want to just like recreate that particle effect. So the first thing I need to do is I need to add animation and movement to the particles, or the points, as we could call them. So first of all, I'm going to use the array unpack free up. And this is going to split the x, y, z array from this into three separate arrays. And then I'm going to use the array pack free up. So let's just grab this and plug it in here. This expects a trigger. And we're back to where we were before. So this is the x component, y component, z component. So first of all, let's add an array multiply. And let's just put that up here. So I want to change the scale of x. And I can just do that by doing this. So I'm just going to put it on 10. Now I want to be able to move those points through space. So I'm going to use array sum. And this will add one number to all values in the array. So if I move this up here, and I move this number, as you can see, we can move everything from left to right. So I want them to move from left to right, but I don't want to lose them. So let's grab a time or two. As you can see, they're going to move, and they're going to go off the screen. So I just want you to see this. Right, so they're moving off the screen. So let's grab now the array modulo. If you're not familiar with it, it's just an easy way to loop a number. You can Google it. If I increase this number now, as you can see, the loop size there becomes bigger. But I've got this cutoff in the middle that I don't want. So let's grab an array, subtract up. As you can see, I can now move it from left to right. So this is really simple to fix. So we're going to go here. I'm going to grab the value up. And this gets plugged into the modulo. And I'm going to put this on, say, 10. I'm now going to grab this value and plug it into array subtract. And in between, I'm going to put a divide up. And I'm just going to divide this by 2. And as you can now see, we can change the size, and it always stays centered. So let's put this back on 10. Great, we've got this kind of like looping effect. We're getting closer to where we want to be. So I'm just going to increase the point size for a minute so it's easier to see, change that color a little bit. OK, great. So what do we want to do now? Well, all of these balls are moving um, at the same speed. So that's something we need to change. So I'm going to go down here. And I'm going to just do a nice little trick. So first of all, I'm going to get the array length. And don't forget, a lot of arrays when you're doing this stuff have to match with their length. So if I click this, I've got an array with a length of 3,000. But what I want to do now is I want to grab a divide up. And I want to divide by 3. Just going to type that in. And now I'm going to make a continuous number array. So this array now has a length of 1,000, because here it's 3,000. We divide it by 3, so we get 1,000 values. And it outputs the numbers 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So I'm now going to grab this. I'm going to grab an array multiply up. And I want to make these numbers really small, so they're going to work with the array sin up. So now I'm going to go here. I'm going to grab the array sin up. And I'm going to put the frequency on, say, 100, and amplification on 0 
And last but not least, before the modulo, I now need to um, do an array math op. So I grab, go here and I say array math, performs a math operation on two arrays. I'm gonna grab this, and as you can see, everything stopped. Why? Array math says, I'm not gonna work until you give me two arrays with the same length. Now don't forget, we're only working on the X component here, okay? So if we click this, you can see it's got a thousand values and that's the same as this one. So I'm gonna grab this and I'm gonna plug it in now. And there's not a whole lot going on, but we need to click Array Math and we need to put it on Multiply. And as you can now see, we're getting a different speed with each ball. If we move the phase, as you can see, we can move them around. So the last thing I wanna do now is some of them aren't almost moving. So I'm gonna grab the Array Sum um, op. And this I can kind of like use to increase and decrease the overall speed, right? Like this. So I'm just gonna put that on one for now. And this is looking a lot more like what we had at the start of the video. So this is all for the X component basically. So I'm just gonna move this stuff up, get it a bit tidy. I'm gonna move that there. And I'm just gonna color all this red. Why? I just need that visual clarity with what's what. So this was like pretty simple and we're already getting pretty close to what we wanted to do before. So the one thing I really want to emphasize is the array sin op or the sign operation doesn't work good on whole numbers like one, two, three, four, five. I mean, if I multiply this by one or 0 0.01 or 0 0.01, we get a completely different effect. It's just a very sensitive relationship between these numbers. Just try it out the different values and just see what you like. So I want to reuse this value here. So I'm going to go over here. I'm going to make an array sin op. And then I'm going to um, plug this, because I just want to show you this for a moment. I'm going to plug it into the Y component. And if I now go here and I move the phase, as you can see, we get this kind of pattern. But that's not very organic. It looks very, um, you know, it's got a big pattern going through there. And we want to break that up. So first of all, let's grab a timer two up and let's put the value on 0 0.25, just slow it down. Now we're getting closer to what we want, but now I'm gonna go here and I'm gonna grab an array math up from a math operation on two arrays. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select multiply and now I'm gonna get the original Y component and plug it in here. And this is looking far more how I'd like it to be. So now I can use the amplitude control here to make them go more up and down. And as you can see, we've already got a really similar effect to what we had at the start of the video. So I'm just gonna give this this color code for Y, just so I know it's different than the rest. And I can just repeat this for the Z component. So I'm gonna go over here, I'm gonna grab this very small uh, multiplied array, and I'm gonna plug it in there. I'm gonna grab the Z component and I'm gonna plug it in here. It's exactly the same operation. I'm gonna disconnect this. I'm gonna put this here. And now I'm gonna put this on say five. And all of a sudden you can see that the particles are now gonna fly away and towards the camera. So we can now change the speed of the XYZ animation by just going to these timers, basically. This is why I created three of them. You can get a lot of different behaviors out of it by playing around like this. So um, this was a basic introduction into how to make your own particle system inside of cables. I hope this video has been educational and informative. If you have any questions or comments, please feel free to leave them under the video below or to post them on the forums. Thanks for watching. Have a good one. Bye.